Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. On uh, today's uh, uh, webinar, we're going to discuss a lot of essential things. My name is Osman. I'll be your host today, and we'll be uh, talking to you about studying medicine abroad, studying dentistry abroad, what are the benefits, why students choose to go abroad. And we have a great list of um, panelists who will be talking to you and explaining to you all the information you need in order to have a fantastic experience when you come abroad. So on today's list of panelists, we have some uh, great uh, speakers. Uh, first of all, we'll introduce our doctors, uh, Dr. Saz Yapa, who is a UK NHS dentist, who will be joining us today to tell you more about his experience studying abroad in Europe and uh, coming back to the UK. We have uh, Dr. Nihal as well, who is an NHS doctor, and uh, we have a list of uh, expert advisors like Edmund, Dana, Tom, and uh, including myself, who will be joining to give you to uh, invite all the speakers to, sp uh, to uh, uh, speak and give you more details. Uh, we also have a great list of uh, amazing students who have been brave enough and courageous enough to come abroad to pursue their dream of studying medicine or dentistry. We have uh, Arian from Poland, who's studying at the University of uh, Bialystok. We have Emma, who is uh, helping with clinical rotations. So she'll be speaking to you a little bit about how you can organize clinical rotations in your home country. Nishant, who is a top student in Georgia as well, in Tbilisi, in the European University of uh, uh, Tbilisi. And Daniel as well, who is studying in Bucharest, in the capital of Romania. So welcome everyone. We have a really exciting list of panelists and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy our uh, speakers stories and how they got here from where they are. So you can uh, see how you can also benefit from these stories. All right, so we'll talk about the outline today. Uh, so we plan to speak to you about, uh, of course, who we are and why we are here to help you. Uh, the benefits of studying abroad, why so many students, thousands of students have chosen to pursue their dream of studying medicine and dentistry abroad instead of doing it at home. And we'll talk to you about why people prefer this option and why you should also consider such an option. Uh, the medical education in Europe and what the quality is like, which we get a lot of questions about. Uh, is it as good as my country? Uh, is it the same? Is it better? We'll tell, we'll tell you more about this, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll be talking about clinical rotations in the UK and USA as well, and uh, in your home country as well, as well as also in uh, the university itself. Uh, we'll tell you about the universities that are still available to apply for. So there are some last minute options now for students that want to apply for last minute um, admission, and that will be for September intake. We'll tell you also, also about the spring intake, which is in... Uh, uh, February. Uh, we'll tell you about the admission requirements. We always get students like you asking us, do I qualify? Do I meet the criteria of acceptance? We'll tell you about how you, whether you do qualify or not and how you can determine if you do qualify. We'll tell you how we can help you. We'll talk to you about the tuition fees and the living costs, which are really essential for you and your parents, I'm sure. Uh, and we'll tell you about the most important thing. Will I be able to come back home and work as a doctor? Is my degree recognized? We'll uh, stay tuned for that so we can give you as much information as possible on this. And finally, um, you'll have a live Q&A with our advisors and our uh, students as well. So shoot your questions in the Q&A section throughout the webinar and we will pick them out and answer them as much as we can to the best of our ability. Uh, we always get hundreds and hundreds of uh, questions, sometimes thousands. So. Uh, uh, send us your questions as early as you can so we can try and pick them out and uh, answer them as much as we can. We'll try and answer most or almost all of the questions. Uh, so uh, wait uh, for us and just be patient and we'll try and uh, get to it. All right, guys. So we'll tell you about uh, us. I'll ask Edmund, who's an expert advisor at Medlink Students, to tell you a little bit more about who we are and what we do. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited to have you join us. I know some of you guys have uh, received your grades this year, uh, this week, and it's been a very, very good time. Uh, we, we congratulate you guys for your, your work, hard work over the year. Now, medical schools in the UK are very, very difficult to get into. We all know this. Um, 
and Dr. Sam, as you saw the video, really good video. Um, a lot of the students that want to get into medical schools with the A's and um, even the A-star students um, wanting to pursue medicine or dentistry, they struggle too. Um, and that's because the, the resources are in the UK are quite limited. So they tend to look elsewhere. Some even give up on their dreams. Now, Dr. Sam started the company as, as a student um, trying to get into medical school. He actually did a degree um, and really wanted to get the opportunity of pursuing his dream of becoming a doctor. So he went out to Romania. And a lot of the ethos of the company really stems for the things that he did, um, from trying to find accommodation, to find somewhere, uh, make some friends. You know, all of these things you never think about when you go abroad because you want somewhere to go to. So meddling students really started from there because all he did was just started to really help a lot of the students, uh, his friends, their friends, a lot of word of mouth. Um, and, and Medlink was birthed through that. And, and since then, we've helped thousands and thousands of students pursue their dreams to become dentists and doctors, and some, of, some of which you'll be speaking to today who have done a brilliant job. Some are still studying there. So we're, we're here today, really excited to welcome you guys. And you know, it's, it's okay to join us abroad and we're really excited to have you join us. Um, and Medding Students is going to continue to provide you guys with the resources and everything that you need to pursue your journey. Uh, over to you, Osman. Thank you, Edmund. That's a great point you, you make, especially about Dr. Sam, which I think a lot of students find really uh, thrilling that you could be that doctor one day, you could be having that patient underneath your arms, you know, you could be saving lives, you could be making a difference to people's lives and alleviating their pain and making their life better and uh, uh, having a better quality of life. As you all know, this is a really amazing part of medicine. And that's why a lot of students go into medicine and dentistry. So you can uh, help people or make their uh, make them more confident when they smile or remove their pain when they have a wisdom tooth surgery, for example. So these are the amazing things about medicine. And this is what we want to share with you guys. It's only going to be a slice of uh, that feeling, but we're going to try and uh, uh, explain as much as we can from our side as medical students, medical, uh, medical doctors, dentists, med dental students. We're going to tell you all about these exciting parts and why we as dentists or doctors or students decided to pursue medicine abroad. All right, so I'll ask Diana to talk a little bit about why many students decide to study medicine abroad and why they find it more suitable than their own countries. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you uh, join us today, especially that um, the academic here is starting soon. I assume most of you are very excited to start your journey with us and join us this year. So just wanted to, to give you an overview about the advantages of studying abroad because we understand, we speak to many students who have the passion, who have the drive to study medicine and become doctors, but they don't get the opportunity sometimes due to the uh, high tuition fees in their home country or due to the high competition. Uh, most of the students are 18 years old when they come to us or 19 and they're a bit hesitant traveling abroad, just like what Edmund said that uh, they're worried about finding their own apartment, leaving their home country for the first time. So that's what we are here for and that's why we started this agency. We're just like you guys, doctors and medical students who will be throughout the journey with you step by step. and. There's a lot of advantages with you traveling and studying abroad. To start discussing the advantages, first of all is the affordability. The universities in Europe uh, have different ranges of prices, but lots of universities have affordable prices. Like the prices usually range between 5,000 pounds or 4,000 pounds up to 25 or 30,000 pounds, which is usually very affordable for students. And these universities offer high quality of education. Uh, they offer completely uh, courses who are, that are completely taught in English language. So that's very uh, relieving for a lot of students. Lots of times I have students telling me, I don't wanna learn a new language. Well, you don't have to spend two or three years learning a new language. You just go and study for six years in English and uh, come back to your home country. 
Also, they're very flexible with the requirements. Lots of times we see students from countries that require straight A's or A stars, and sometimes you get a B and you don't get the opportunity. Well, in Europe, you can, if you have a B, whatever you have on your high school, feel free to get in touch with us. Our expert advisors will be speaking to you. They will assess your uh, transcripts and they will tell you which universities you're qualified for because we will always be able to help you find an opportunity in order to study medicine and achieve your dream. In addition, the universities are worldwide recognized. They are globally recognized. So you can go study abroad and return to your home country. You don't have to worry about that. One more nice thing usually students tell me about is the experience itself. When you travel abroad, we as MedLink, we get in touch with you to help you find a suitable university based on your qualifications. But we also focus on the environment. Lots of students come from countries, for example, from the UK. They tell us, I would like to have British students with me on campus. Uh, from uh, Germany, they would like to have Germans. From Middle East, they'd like to have Middle Easterns. So we tend to always help you find the right environment where you're going to be happy and comfortable where you go. It's not only achieving your dream and becoming a phenomenal doctor, but also having a really nice experience for six years that you will never forget for the rest of your life. So we help you find the right environment where you have a nice experience. You meet lots of students from different countries, from different backgrounds, which can be very beneficial getting to know the systems in different countries. In the summer, for example, each student goes to his home country to visit his parents during the summer vacation. And they come back telling each other, I did uh, um, rotations with a relative here. I have a doctor. Um, they, sh they share experiences. So it opens your mind, exposes you to several cultures, in addition to uh, the affordability of life there. So. It's very cheap to live in Europe. You, you can live on literally 200 pounds per month and uh, go out with your friends. Uh, sorry, go out with your friends uh, during the weekends, go vacations, and it never um, affects. Uh, it's, it's not usually expensive. So you can have a nice experience, make friends from lots of different countries, and at the same time, achieve your dream and become a doctor. So we really look forward to having you guys join us uh, in September 2021 and helping you achieve your dream to become a doctor. So feel free to get in touch with us, whatever you scored on your A-levels, get in touch with us and our advisors will be advising you where you can apply before the deadlines are uh, over. Back to you, Osman. Thank you, Dana. This is a really good list that you told us there I uh, this is only a couple of things uh, but I am sure that you will find out a lot more throughout the webinar on why students from personal stories why they chose to go abroad all right so we'll talk to you a little bit about the medical education in Europe me and Edmund will take over here so the aim is to help UK grad UK high school graduates to once you finish your GCSEs A levels uh, or um, year 12, wherever you are in the world, to go and study medicine abroad. So there are three routes usually, or three, th three ways that we can help students that come to us. And uh, the first one, the most obvious one, and the most common one is to study medicine in six years. So usually you will get the chance to study medicine after you, you finish your high school. And the great thing about it is that you don't have to take any gap years, you don't have to wait, you don't have to feel like, oh, I need to take more, uh, have more experience, more shadowing, more work experience. None of that. You don't have to stress about any of this. The great thing about Europe is that it opens the door and the opportunity for so many students that are hungry and passionate for medicine that they are willing to relocate away from their families, to move away to another country, simply because they are so hungry to become doctors and dentists. And these are the, be these are the people that make the best doctors and dentists in the world. The people that are passionate, that are ambitious, that are hardworking, that want to go walk the planet just to be able to do what they want to do. And that is to give back to the community, to work and become doctors and uh, study hard, work hard, become doctors, um, you know, become integral parts of parts of societies where they're giving back and helping the community. 
And this is how we're going to help you. This is how Europe offers you the opportunity. It opens the door and gives you the chance to come and prove to yourself and to your parents and to anybody else that you can do it. The great thing is the door is open and Europe offers so many diverse and exciting options that so many students are always so excited to hear about all the options available in Europe. Um, and that's what we're gonna talk to you a little bit further on about all the universities that are offering medicine in English or dentistry in English. Uh, so we'll talk to you about admission requirements as well a little bit later on because there are various requirements, various universities that will meet usually the criteria depending on what the student requires. Um, so let's talk a little bit about dentistry, first of all. Uh, dental education in Europe, in Europe is usually five to six years, depending on the country that offers it. But I will not go into too much depth into it because we have Dr. Saz Yapa here, who is a top UK dentist in uh, the NHS, and he'll be, and also private, he'll be talking to you a little bit about his experience and why he chose to study med uh, dentistry abroad and then come back to the UK in practice. So much, uh, Austin. I appreciate that, and congratulations to everyone uh, again on um, getting through A levels and um, getting through this sort of period. It's a super exciting time. What I would say is the main thing, um, and it seems to just basically echo what everyone else is is um, have started with was this burning desire to do dentistry. For me, I just knew I had to do it. Like there was. I really knew well was that time was my biggest asset. I like just like Austin just said, like I wasn't prepared to wait. Like that just wasn't an option for me. Um, uh, someone's saying they can't hear me. Can I? Can I don't know. Is it very quiet or? We can hear you loud and clear, but uh, it just cuts off sometimes. Just continue. We'll let you know. Doctor says. Okay. Cool. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would have been so grateful, like beyond, beyond belief, if there was a company like Medlink around when I was doing my, when I was sort of looking at universities, because I had to do my own research, and go to um, different universities around in Europe to find out where would be best for me. Um, but fortunately, you have that support here now, so you can get a lot of information, direct information. I mean, I've been five years graduated now. So if you have any questions directly for me, then I'd be more than happy to ask. I wasn't prepared to wait. Um, I was already, I was working at the time and I just knew I had to do dentistry. And I went to a number of different countries in Europe to find out where I could go. And then basically start in by, by the new year or by Christmas. So um, I went to Riga in the end. That was the place that I went to study. And yeah, I very quickly, and I think that's because I'm a more mature student. When I went there, I was 25. Um, I knew at that time in my life that I needed to get good friends before I started there and have a good network of people. And like, if you've got people around you like Austin and Edmund and Daniel around who are going to help you, um, you've got that support network whilst you're out there. So I basically built that when I went there and I had to make friends whilst I was there. And that was a big support for me whilst I was there during the studies, getting through the exams and things like that. But I can honestly say, looking back on reflection, this would have either been like the best thing I never did or the best thing I ever did. And for me, it was the best thing I ever did because now it's allowed me to continuously develop skills that are constantly going to be allowing me to help people more and more every single day not just by year five, which is when the degree program finishes, but after that as well. So you're constantly learning, you're constantly going on courses and learning new surgical skills, learning new aesthetic skills, learning new ways to support your patients. And people pay a lot of money for that. These are highly valuable skills. Um, the kinds of people I've now met since then have been very, very successful people, whether they've graduated abroad or whether they've graduated in the UK. Um, which is where I'm from and where I, I work. So um, I studied in, in Latvia. That's where I went to study dentistry. Um, that was one of the questions that just came up. So um, Riga was a great place, phenomenal place to study. 
Um, what I really liked about it there was that the groups of the classes were very small. You wouldn't have like, there'd be more, there'd be only about eight or nine people per group, which is just phenomenal. Um, so you got a lot of, um, a lot more time um, with, with, um, with patients and, and, and um, with, um, sorry, the course coordinators. So you got a lot more teaching experience as well. Um, but yeah, there were, there were, there were just so many great things that came out of it including the the network of friends i have all across europe now so um i think if i studied just in the uk i wouldn't have that and um, that that's such a valuable thing for me right now you know i've got a group of people i can go and visit and see what they're doing in these countries so it was hugely valuable and i i highly recommend it Uh, are you there, Dr. Sess? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing thank that. You, thank you for sharing. Did you have any uh, initial uh, doubts before going abroad? Um, in terms of that I wanted to do dentistry, no, that was 100%. About the place, I had certain reservations because I just hadn't been there, so I decided to go there. Um, but it's when I really met other students there and I felt that they were progressing and I could see they were in the third, fourth, fifth year and they were just like me. And I thought, yeah, I could do this. You know, I, the, you know, I, I had an opportunity to meet them. And I, for me, what really makes me happy deep down inside any given day is when I see progress in my own development. And I could see that in these people. They were moving forward every year. They were getting, getting better. So, um, those reservations were dispelled very quickly. Yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Dr. Saz. If you guys have any questions, then feel free to shoot them in the Q&A and we'll get back to you guys as soon as we can. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next most popular course, and that is usually graduate medicine or dentistry. Now, who can study usually graduate medicine or dentistry? These are usually tailored undergraduate courses tailored for students that have graduated in a bachelor's or master's degree, and they can then usually get exempted from specific subjects. And then that way, instead of doing six years, they can cut down their degree into, let's say, a compressed four years or compressed five years, depending on how much credits they have from their bachelor's degrees. Um, and the exciting thing about this uh, kind of course is that it is shorter and that way you don't have to spend six years studying medicine or dentistry you can get done faster uh, so this is something that's been very popular and many students have pursued this course what's important as well is that it does meet the criteria of acceptance usually set by your country and when you come to us you ask us about this we'll usually tell you about what the criteria is and we'll guide you on which course meets your criteria better than the other course. Uh, we'll cover this a little bit later on because we have some graduate entry students who will talk about their experience as well. So university transfers are usually also another service that we support students with. And this is where <coughs> students uh, can transfer between medical universities and they can change to another medical university if they choose to change. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, clinical rotations later on in the webinar. We'll come back to this. Uh, we'll move on to best universities at the moment that are offering medicine courses in English that are open and available for students to uh, begin studying this September or for next year. So I'll pass you over to Tom. Would you be able to expand a little bit about this? Tom is one of our expert advisors on this. Yes, of course. So as you can see, um, the ones that are highlighted in bold there are universities that are still available for this September. Um, obviously, we are quite short on time now. Um, we are very close to it. But the good news is there are still some options here, uh, not just any old options as well, but some really great options as well. So um, obviously, not every university is for everyone. Um, so the whole idea is that you'll have a call with ourselves, one of our advisors, and we'll talk you through everything that you need to know. We'll find out everything that we can about yourself 
And then we can give you the best options based on your grades, your experiences, your preferences, your budget, all these kinds of things. Um, but the main thing to consider is there are still options available. Now, for those of you who are looking to apply maybe next year or even the year after, as you can see, there are a lot more very popular options as well. You've got places like the Czech Republic, um, Slovakia, Italy, lots of places that you can consider. Now, one of the great things about Europe is just the pure variety. So whether you're someone who has a very little budget or whether you're someone who wants, um, like was mentioned before, very small classes, um, whether you want big classes, whether you want sort of newer facilities or more focused on research, there's always going to be a university that's there for you. And there's always going to be something that's suited to your preferences, as well as a university where you have a really good chance of getting an acceptance. And obviously, we will help you to do just that. Brilliant, Tom. Thank you for sharing that. So what would you advise students that want to apply now last minute? Which uh, top three options would you say they should consider at the moment? Uh, it all depends on the student. Um, Denit Pro is really popular at the moment. We're taking a lot of applications with that university. Um, I suppose one thing that you've just reminded me to mention there is the differences in the admission. So with some universities, you do have to sit entrance tests. Now, quite often, you need quite a bit of time to prepare for these entrance tests. Some of them are fairly simple, and I'm sure some of the students will tell you when they talk about theirs, but others can be quite challenging. And any entrance test will pose a certain amount of risk to your application. Now, obviously, if you've just tried to get into the UK or into any other country and you've not been successful, usually that element of risk is not something that you really want to go through a second time. So if you're looking at places like Denit Pro, it's just a, an application that you'll need for that university. Or somewhere like the European University in Georgia is an interview and a very friendly interview. I think every student that I've spoken to that's uh, come out of that interview has had a smile on their face afterwards, which is always a positive sign. Um, in Georgia have got to be a couple of the most popular ones at the moment. Um, and also Bulgaria. Um, so we've recently found out that Plovdiv will be allowing applications for a slightly longer period of time which we didn't think possible at first, but we've spoken with them and they're happy to carry on taking on applications. Um, another really popular university, especially for UK students. So yeah, lots of opportunities still available. Um, give us a call and we'd be happy to go through them all with you. Thank you, Tom. That was a brilliant uh, guidance there for students. If you have any other questions about this, feel free to ask. Um, Someone is asking, are the clinical rotations in English? Yes, of course, you, your clinical rotations will be mostly in English. And if there is any element of foreign language of the local language, for example, a patient cannot speak English, then usually a translation will be made for you by the teacher, by the professor, by a colleague, assistant teacher. Um, usually that will uh, support you in that aspect. So if you have any more, uh, uh, if you're curious about more universities that you'd like to look into, then just scan this QR code here using your phone and uh, you'll be able to access our website on the universities page where we have all the universities that teach medicine and dentistry in English there. And uh, you can click and see which ones teach which course. Uh, uh, Nishant to speak a little bit about his university and his experience and how he's found it since uh, initially thinking about the option and eventually ending up in Georgia. Hello, thank you, Osman. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So my name is Nishant Kaushik, and basically I belong to India. I'm a student of medicine in Tbilisi, Georgia, in European University. So first of all, I would like to uh, give some info information about the environmental condition in Georgia and what kind of people are here. So basically, like, when some person is take a, going to take admission in uh, foreign uh, foreign country apart from their home country, so the main concern is about their what kind of environment is there, is people are fr friendly there or not, what kind of food and all, such kind of things. So here people are quite friendly with the foreigners especially, and uh, like basically I belongs from India, so uh, in Georgia people loves India so much. Uh, there are many reasons to loving about uh, my country. And about the uh, 
about the weather uh, weather conditions like weather uh, condition are quite pleasant in georgia i uh, like a uh, 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 student from any country can take admission here uh, in any of our university basically if i speak about my university so in my university if i talk about uh, the student interaction with the professors and the administration so our professors in my university are uh, highly qualified with their degrees uh, some of our they are doctors and some of our phd holders and uh, uh, they are quite friendly with the students they are always ready to help us in any of the situations they always provide every teachers provide their personal phone numbers to the students so it any time if we have any doubt or something we can directly contact with them at any time and with the administration we have all pe person has uh, their uh, own mail we can ask any of our queries at any time and about to my university i want to say that uh, we have some exchange program with the different countries like we have our some uh, contact uh, uh, partners with my university uh, like uh, korea lithuania and romania with do uh, like we have some uh, contact university in these countries uh, so we have we have we are like we are exchanging some students as per the interviews and some of our uh, their personal examination so we are uh, like my university sending some universities every year and we have erasmus project every year uh, so from there by uh, english uh, i think english language examination or interview it is and last year uh, uh, one of my uh, colleague uh, uh, went uh, to uh, went by erasmus project uh, for one semester and also like we have uh, for our studies for basically for medicine st studies in my university we have a well equipped simulation center it gives a feel likes that we are in a hospital like they my university set up that simulation center last year during this pandemic because we are unable to go in the hospital because of the because in every hospital there are covid departments so it it was like a highly risk for the students to go there so these are the things and also we have for the students for specifically for the medicine department Uh, we have oski examination uh, every year uh, every year and uh, also we have some uh, scientific conferences every year which is held two times in a day two times in a year uh, like we have to uh, with the with the our cooperation with the professors we are making some research about the medicine and uh, like if it is dentistry field we are like students are making uh, presentations and research about the dentistry and the medicine as well as so i uh, like and, uh, and jury is uh, observing us about our research what kind of work we are uh, doing and also i would like to say that in my university we have some cultural uh, cultural uh, things as well as like from every countries who like in my uh, university like uh, many countries students are studying so our university is organizing different different uh, uh, things for the student as well as like it depends on the it depends on the country which country they are belong so they are uh, providing everything for the students as, as whatever they can do in this uh, pandemic time uh, uh, my university managed very well with the students like uh, earlier there was uh, providing us online facilities about the studies but as we all know that uh, medis medicine is not uh, depend on the online things as we know so after one semester they started uh, the uh, last uh, last some time they started some of lectures with uh, like online and they are sending us to the hospital as well as not to all the time but they are sending us uh, most of the time in the hospitals as well as we have clinical rotations like as we have clinical subject after second year of our studies so we are visiting hospitals and we have a direct interaction with the uh, patients and we are getting knowledge from the doctors we have a very highly uh, qualified doctors there they are giving all the uh, knowledge uh, to us and then we have a Uh, uh body to body contact with the like physically contact with the patients and we can get uh, all the informations from there and also we have uh like uh, in of my university uh, like last year as i as i have seen that we have a international federation of medical school uh, uh, like they are they selected some of like almost 100 students participated there and uh, it's a, it's a kind of exchange program given by my university for the students so these are the basic things like i i i
I can explain this. Okay, so, brilliant. Wow, uh, Nishant, uh, you, you are question? you are Wikipedia yourself. <laughs> that was a lot of information. I hope uh, you guys have found it helpful. Uh, so yes, uh, great uh, points, Nishant, about the university and the features and why you decided to study there. So great job there. Well done for sharing this information. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let's go, like, uh, if let's I say about, uh, to the next one. Uh, we'll bring you in Nishant a little bit later on in the Q&A section where you can okay, uh, okay. talk a little bit more. Okay. Um, so we can uh, stay on time. So we have uh, Romania next. Let's speak a little bit about Romania. We have Daniel with us here. Um, good evening, everyone. Can you all hear me? Hello, Daniel. Yes, loud and clear. Uh, right. Thanks for joining, um, Daniel. I'd like to ask you, you, how have you found your experience so far? And uh, tell us a little bit about your journey from start until now. Um, Okay, so a little bit of myself. Uh, I'm Daniel. I'm originally from Kenya, but I live in uh, Finland. I moved to Finland when I was 24 years old. I have studied uh, nursing and I've been working as a nurse, a registered nurse in Finland. And, and I decided that I wanted to be a doctor. And um, I was once uh, in the shoes of the applicants and the people who have finished high school. So I know exactly what you guys are going through. I have been there. Um, a living testimony. So I wanted to apply to medical school and I Googled and uh, I did a lot of research. And the first thing that came when you Google study medicine in Europe, you always find the website for MedLink there on the first page. So after I went through the options that I had, I noticed that there was a lot of work to be done, especially because I studied in, in Kenya, my high school. And also because I did high school like 10 years ago. So what I did, I decided to make my work easier and I contacted the MedLink and I had Edmund as my, um, as the guy who was coordinating my application. So thank you so much, Edmund. I didn't get the chance to thank you. Um, so basically MedLink did almost everything for me. I just had to submit my documents, my high school documents and the rest they did for me, everything. Uh, it was very amazing. We had a very difficult year last year because that's when Corona was really on its high and everyone was confused and it was so much uh, confusion. Um, but I thank God that everything went well. And finally, I got a spot in a Carol David. And uh, the only, that is not the only thing that Medlik did for me. They also organized that I, so they, I got someone waiting for me in Romania when I landed there, someone who uh, was guiding me on the processes of what I need to do in the first few weeks, how to register in the school. They guided me in getting an, um, an, a rented apartment. They picked me from the airport. It was, um, to be honest, uh, I don't think you'll get any other company to do all of these things in, uh, for the amount of money that I paid. So, so uh, I think that if you really want your application to go through, you are in the right place. Uh, my, my, the reason why I went to, to Romania was, was because first of all, the school, they are cheap and I went to school and uh, the course is in English. And also because I've been living in Finland, I wanted to study in a country which has warm weather and Romania has one of the best weathers, to be honest. Um, also the country is very beautiful. Uh, the other thing is that uh, um, I also wanted to study in a country which is in EU and also that the certificates that I'm going to get there that are going to be accepted in the whole world and not only in Romania, but also in Finland. So at the moment, what I'm doing, um, I'm studying in Romania, but I'm doing all my rotations in Finland. And I don't need to do or to provide any other documents on that. I just provide my school document that I'm in studying in Carota Villa, I need a spot for rotation. I just, uh, at the moment, I'm doing a, my internship in, in, in ICU, in the same hospital that I've, I have been working before as a nurse. And uh, they are so excited when I, when you get to that year, just come, I'm going to give you a job as an assistant doctor. And so this is also something else that I, I want to encourage the guys who are going to apply your certificate and any document that you're going to get in Europe, they will be available or they will be viable in any other place in the whole world. So you don't have to worry about that. 
The way we study in Romania is very interesting. We are subdivided in small groups of about 10 students. The whole of first year is about 300 students and we are subdivided in small groups. So the studying is very personalized. Uh, during Corona, we had like a, a very um, a mixed hybrid system. Where we had at least 40% in school. So like uh, a colleague said earlier, a medical school can't be online all the time. So we have to be, we have to have hands on work. We have to go to the, to them, uh, to the school and work on the cadaver for anatomy. We have to do uh, laboratory work. So, so uh, if you're planning to come to Romania, the way they are studying there is very personalized. You will be grouped in small groups and you will feel that you are participating. Um, uh, what else should I talk about? Um, it's very intense. Medical school is very intense, but as long as you're disciplined and as long as you're willing, you're going to go through, you're not the first student to be a medical student. It has been done before. And uh, if you put in work, if you put in time, it's gonna give, you're going to get the good results. So um, there was someone who asked about age. I, I can tell you that I'm, I just turned 31 years old right now. I'm going to be studying my second year in medicine. So there is no limit to your dreams. You can't put limits to your dreams. You can get anything you want. You just have to put your mind into it. Um, I have had also other degrees. So that also played a good part in my application last year. Uh, and like um, the coordinators have said, uh, every university has its own methodology of uh, application. So for Carlo da Villa last year, they checked if you had had prior degrees and that gave me a lot of points and it was good for me. Uh, the rent in Romania is very cheap. The life is very cheap. Uh, you can actually live for, for like 300 euros. You have a good apartment. You can have a shared apartment with another student. Uh, and basically Bucharest is a student city. It's, a, it's like a tourist city and it's a student city. So if you're coming there, you're going to enjoy. The school that I'm studying in is a very uh, it has a very international feel to it. Different students from all over the world. We have a lot of Arabs, or students from uh, Africa. We have students from Europe. We have students from USA. Everywhere. So if if you if you thrive in that kind of environment, Romania is the best place for you. Uh, I saw that um, the University of Constance is still uh, having its application uh, period open. And I know I have visited to Constanza and I know it's a very beautiful city. In fact, I even thought, should I transfer to Constanza because uh, it's a coastal city, very beautiful city. It's even cheaper than Carlo da Villa. And the uh, methodology of application is easier to get you. It's an easier way. You can easily get a spot there than in Bucharest if you're applying for, for medical school in Constanza. Uh, we also have exchange programs. You can, I think most of the medical universities in Romania, they have exchange programs with medical universities in, a, in the UK and all over Europe. So it's, if you can, you know, at one point go for some time in, uh, in your country or wherever you want to go to and experience a different, different kind of uh, life. Um, I don't know what else to say, but if you have a question, uh, feel free to drop in the chat and I will be able to answer. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Daniel. That was a very nice and thorough description and brief as well uh, of your story. Uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you for your time. You guys can ask Thank questions you. in the Q&A section if you have any for any of our students or doctors. Uh, moving on quickly to Bulgaria now. So uh, I'll ask Dr. Akaf, who's a recent graduate from Plovdiv University in dentistry, uh, to speak about his experience and what drove him to go and study dentistry in Bulgaria. Good evening, guys. Uh, my name's Aka. I um, recently graduated uh, from Bulgaria Plovdiv uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say how everyone got the results that they, um, that they needed um, to get in. Um, I know a lot of people have been very su successful this year. Um, so, yeah, uh, so moving on. So, I went to Bulgaria six years ago, uh, back in 2015, probably one of the best sorry about this, decisions I've ever made. Um, and yeah, I've never looked back. Um, it's been one of the, some, of the, some of the best years I've sort of experienced. Um, yeah, so in terms of 
the education structure over there, a lot of people have these misconcepts about Bulgaria potentially maybe being backwards in Eastern Europe uh, and the UK being this sort of pinnacle of education along with America, you can say, or Western Europe. Uh, but actually, Eastern Europe um, in certain areas is better than, than Western Europe, America. Um, so, yeah, um, one, of the, one of the key things that stands out for me that I've experienced is there's, um, you have small groups, therefore you have a better interaction with your professors uh, and your teachers. And another benefit is that specifically for dentistry, because that's what I did. Um, so because over there, there isn't a sort of, so in the UK, we specialize. So you've got a prosthodontist, for example, an oral surgeon over there. There's not a, a, a such thing as that, if you want to say, or, or they don't specialize as much in the UK. So because of that, um, they make you learn everything. Um, you also learn um, subjects from the medical field. So you have a vast understanding of everything you need. And in my opinion, and speaking to some of my friends who have recently graduated and graduated a few years ago, um, they're all saying um, that um, I'm, I'm in a better standing. Um, I've, I've got more vast, I've got more knowledge in certain areas like endodontics and root canals because we have to do, uh, specifically in Plovdiv, we have to do 25 root canals, um, which means I'm in a better position than many UK students who rarely do four or five, depending on what uni you go to. Um, so yeah, the teacher's incredibly friendly. They're very nice. Uh, they understand that there's a language barrier there. They try the utmost to help you. Um, in terms of the facilities, well, uh, what can I say? Over the past few years, um, there's been a lot of investment and some of the facilities are on par, if not better, than, um, let's say, for example, Leeds, because I'm, I'm near, near Leeds, Leeds Dental Uni, okay? Um, so, yeah, in terms of the lifestyle there, well, that's one of the things that I enjoy the most. Um, so plot Bulgaria is situated close to three or four countries. So you've got Romania, uh, which means that literally within three or four hours, you can be in Bucharest, where Daniel lives. Um, within three or four hours again, you can be in Belgrade and Serbia, which is another fantastic city. And Greece, literally, which is one of the best countries in the world. Um, it's got a number of fantastic sort of seaside areas. Um, you can be there within four or five hours. Personally, I visit Thessaloniki, which is the second biggest city, um, twice a year, because uh, it's not far away from Plovdiv, which is where I'm based. Um, and Turkey, again, Turkey, literally an hour and a half away from the border, and you can get to Istanbul within three hours. On a coach, five hours. So, yeah, look, um, studying in Bulgaria will be one of the best choices you will ever make. Um, it is near so many countries. Um, also in the winter, if you're someone who likes winter sports, uh, we've got skiing available. So we've got a ski resort, a resort called Bansko, which has been rated as being the top five uh, ski resorts in Europe. Uh, and that is two hours away from the capital, Sofia. And Plovdiv, which is the second biggest city where I'm, where I'm studying, it's literally another an hour and a half away. Um, so yeah, and in the summer, it's got a fantastic coastline called the Black Sea coastline. Um, and you've got places like Burgas, Varna, and you've got Sozopol, and you've got the famous strip known as Sunny Beach, which is um, the Eastern European version of uh, Ibiza, you can call it. Um, so, yeah, um, in terms of the culture there, look, Bulgarian is a very hard language to learn. I'm not going to deny that. Um, but at the same time, if you learn that, it opens doors up to learning Russian because it's very similar. And there's a large population in the world that speaks Russian, and that can open many, many doors up for you as well. Um, in terms of making friends, well, um, I've got friends from Turkey, Romania, Greece, and if I'd studied in the UK, which I did uh, for a couple of years, I wouldn't have had the same opportunity. And whenever I go on holiday or work-wise in Europe, I've got these contacts which will be invaluable in the future. Um, so yes, um, so Plovdiv itself, in my opinion, Sofia's fantastic, Plovdiv's great, uh, but I'll speak a bit more about Plovdiv. So Sofia's, um, if you're a city type of person, Sofia's the best choice for you. Um, it's got everything you could possibly ask for, but Plovdiv is in my heart. And the reason, because um, like I've told you, it's fantastic people there. Uh, the people are really friendly. Um, they, accept, they accept foreign people uh, very well. Uh, restaurants have been an influx of foreign restaurants 
Um, I, from a Muslim background, and for me, halal meat is, um, is a big thing. And uh, recently there's been more halal butchers that have opened up and um, there's been more um, sort of more takeaways that have opened up, which emulated British style of takeaways or restaurants. So yeah, um, some of the pr professors, like I've said again, they're really, really nice. Um, you can be, you can even go out, for example, for meals with them, uh, with other groups of students, um, and and yeah, so yeah, that that that's pretty much it about Plovdiv in Bulgaria. Um, Europe's a fantastic location to, to study, guys. And if you're if you are somewhere in between, uh, and you don't know what to do, honestly, I would take the plunge. It will be the best choice you will ever make. Um, yeah. So in terms of Medlink themselves. Uh, Guys, honestly, it's a fantastic company. Um, they've got students at their heart. Uh, the ethos is basically students by the students for the students. And Osman and Edmund, who I know particularly well, are very good guys and they will help you all the way. Um, once you arrive there, from transfers to finding apartments, the mobile phone contracts, whatever it is, they will be at your beck and call. So, yeah, um, I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. Um, so, yeah, I'm passing it over back to Osman. Cheers, guys. Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Akaf. That was uh, great from you as well and also gave lots of students a lot of insight. One university I think uh, we should mention is Varna University as well, which is on the beach. Uh, this is where I studied dentistry as well. Uh, it's a great university if you like the beach as well. So, And uh, if you like to be in a very competitive university, one of them is Varna University. All right, let's move on quickly to the next one, and that is Poland. Uh, so we'll get Arian our top student in Poland to speak a little bit about his experience and uh, how he ended up in the University of Bialystok. Hello everyone, my name is Arian. I am uh, just after finishing first year and now going to start second year in October. So I'm going to quickly just uh, talk about Bialystok and what's it like studying here. So I would say that Poland is in general a very cheap country and I would say for around 400 pounds, you would be able to get uh, yourself a very nice apartment. So I have some friends who they've they've got themselves apartments just under 600 pounds, just under 600 pounds, and they have I would say a, a very big apartment on the third floor with a whole garden. So sometimes let's say they'll invite like 10 people, they'll have like a barbecue. So I would say the apartments here are very cheap compared to let's say if you were to study in the UK. Uh, the location where we live, uh, everyone seems to be pretty close to each other because I, I would say the dorms and the apartments, they're quite, let's say, five to ten minutes from each other because where everyone buys their own apartments, it seems to be very close to the dorms. So I would say everyone, you know, when there's times where people want to meet each other and everything, it's not like much of a problem because everyone seems to be uh, living quite close to each other. The city centre in Białystok is also close to where everyone lives. So I'd say maybe max 10 minutes walk. And the one good thing is that everything seems to be very close to each other. For example, the further, you know, the, all the supermarkets and all the pubs and everything, everything is around the city center. So you won't be able to, I mean, you won't have to travel you know, very long distances in order to get where, you know, you want to go. The university is around 15 minutes from the dorms and the apartments. Uh, and I would say the one really good thing about the university is they have their, their own hospital, which kind of helps us to get like further insight into like the medical experience. And even like now I'm doing clerkship and what I've realized is that I'm actually getting very involved with the, with the patients and, you know, they're kind of giving me like a really good experience of what it would be like if I was, for example, to work there in the future. Uh, the city is two hours away from the capital, which, which is Warsaw. Uh, this is, I'm talking about train journey. Car, I would say it's around an hour and a half. So I think that's really good because let's say sometimes on the weekends, me and my friends, we, we would come together, we'd go to Warsaw and it would, be, it would be really good for like a change. So we would go there and visit all the different shopping centers. And obviously Warsaw is a very big tourist city. So that would be really nice. Uh, I would say as a first year student, unfortunately, I haven't been able to experience too much from the uni because of the virus. But from what I've heard from the older students is that there is a lot of 
very nice events. Of course, we have not had the opportunity to go through that, but it looks like everything in Poland seems to be getting better. So I'd say for this year, the first season will be very lucky because they're going to be able to experience everything. And one thing that I've also realized is that all the students tend to be very helpful. That's what we've been talking kind of within the first year students is that everyone, you know, uh, once the first year students arrived, all the students seem to like show us around the city and like give us really good advice how to, you know, um, kind of settle that, settle ourselves better within the city and like the university and everything. I also realized that this university seems to be very lenient and also kind of like understanding like with the students. They're not really very much because from what I've realized from my own experience in going to school in the UK is that UK is very much like strict on the rules. Very like you could be one point away from like passing or something like that. They'll be very very strict. And the one thing that I realized here is that. The university, they will sometimes let us off with, you know, things. So that's kind of really good because I think it definitely helped a lot of us this year. I would say the students within the year are very interconnected with each other. So we seem to always be talking with each other and be like uh, in contact and going out. I think that's kind of really good because it helped us with the studies. I, for example, myself, one thing that I really did well this year is I made a really stable social network around me. So that kind of helped me, you know, uh, to like pass certain exams because I'd be studying with the others and they would always teach me something that I wouldn't know or let's say if, if I wasn't really informed about everything I would always have someone like notify me so I think that's kind of good and I also advise people that are younger not to be very stressed about this whole age thing because I think if you know if, for example like me if you are 18 coming to first year what you'll realize is that a lot of people in the year will be older than you, like in their 20s and everything like that. But the one thing I wouldn't really do is put yourself at a disadvantage because of it. Because at the end of the day, everyone's very old. You get to meet people from like all over the country, like Sweden, Norway, Portugal. And, you know, everyone, you know, from those kind of places seems to be very open about me and you. And they don't really take this whole thing where, you know, you might be younger than others. It's really not, you know, you shouldn't take it too seriously. For example, me, I would say, like, like, like I said, I came here, I was 18. But I probably have settled my, my, myself here better than most people. So, you know, that's not really nothing to be uh, stressed about. I also want to say that uh, Medlinks were very helpful with sent, like getting me, you know, to my location. And Edmund was always there to call me and make sure, like, you know, I'm doing everything okay. I'm doing everything the right way. You'd also, like, you know, we would have, like, regular phone calls just to make sure that I'm on the right way. Uh, you know, just everything, doing everything correct and making sure that, I'm successfully selling myself in the other stuff. And also, even one of the other workers, his name's Alejandro. He came to the uh, hospital, I mean, no, it's not the hospital, the airport. He came to, just to make sure that, you know, he can uh, bring me to the other stock. He even helped me with the shop and everything. So I think that was very helpful. Um, that's everything for me. Thank you. Thank you, Arian. Uh, that's a really exciting story how you came from the UK, pursued your dream of studying medicine in Poland, uh, gave it a shot, and uh, eventually it worked out. That's, it sounds great. Thank you for sharing that. We'll talk a little bit about uh, now admission requirements. I'll ask uh, uh, Dana to speak about admission requirements for students who want to apply for first year entry or graduate entry, since we've covered both these courses. Dana, can you step in here? Yeah. Um... So most common question I get from students on the first call is like, what do I need to apply? Can I apply? Am I qualified? So don't worry about that. Universities in Europe are flexible with their requirements. They require basic sciences. You need to have sciences in your high school. And sometimes we have students who don't have sciences where we can still help you. Don't worry. Don't give up on your dream. Don't think that you're not meant to be. Just book a call with us, speak to an advisor, we'll assess your uh, high school and uh, we'll let you know what you can do to apply. Some universities require also language proficiency, uh, which is IELTS or TOEFL, or sometimes uh, some universities, instead of if you don't have IELTS, you can have an interview in English language just to see the qualifications and the proficiency you have in biology, chemistry and English language. In addition, um, they require, of course, having biology, chemistry, IELTS, and some universities have an interview just to see your basic knowledge also. And this is something we can help you with. We will prepare you for the entrance exam. 
will give you the material to study that if you cover the material, you should be okay. And some universities don't require an entrance exam, which is uh, also based on the file we create for you. And of course, a passport. So it's not very complicated. All you need to do is get in touch with us. We'll help you assess your file and tell you what universities you're qualified for. Same goes for graduate entry. In addition, we will require your transcripts from your bachelors. So some students come to us with masters or bachelors, they have a degree. We'll need your transcripts. Uh, we'll assess your transcripts to see which year of entry you can get, how many subjects can be equivalated, if you can join year two or year three. So that's all. I, I, I try to keep it short and straightforward to the point because I see lots of questions which I want to keep time for at the end of the poll so we can uh, answer all your questions. Back to you, Osman. Thank you, Dana. Yes, so as Dana is saying, we provide opportunities and Europe provides opportunities for everyone. Whatever your background, whatever your qualifications are, we're here to help. That's why we started our organization and that's what we're going to go into now. We started this organization with the hope of helping people, just like I have pursued dentistry uh, and other people have pursued medicine here and dentistry in Europe. We want to help people like you, give you the opportunity because we know that it's tough, it's competitive, and it's not easy being accepted at home. That's why we came in. We decided, you know what, we're gonna help these students, we're gonna help people, we're gonna allow people to pursue their dream and open up the opportunity and the door for people because people are terrified and scared a little bit of going abroad. And this is very natural. I was as well when I considered going abroad. Everyone would be. But the important thing is that you educate yourself by speaking to our advisors, attending these webinars. By attending this webinar, you're only go, pushing yourself forward, one step forward to being able to be closer to your dream, closer to fulfilling the ambition of becoming a doctor or a dentist. And that's where I'm going to bring in our advisor, top advisor, Tom, to tell you a little bit more about how we can help you as Medlink students. Yeah, thanks, Ozzy. And as you were saying there about taking steps forward, um, that's what it is all about initially. You're always taking steps. Um, so obviously, when you're looking at the first steps, it is something like this, coming to this webinar. The next step is obviously talking to one of ourselves as an advisor. Um, now, it can be quite daunting, obviously, having a phone call about something that's going to decide so much for your future. And that's why we take so much time with every single one of you to ensure that we can get the best possible options for you. Um, so, as I mentioned briefly before, we look at things like your budget for tuition fees, as well as your personal preferences and exactly what you're looking for in a university. We don't just want to throw you into any university, we want to throw you into your university, the school that is right for you, whether that's Romania, anywhere in Europe, we want to help you and try and find the best possible option. So that's the first step. From there, it's obviously about helping with the application. So whatever needs to be done for that university, we have a team that are dedicated to do it. And we obviously do this for lots and lots and lots of students and have done for many, many years. So that team will work tirelessly on everything that needs to be completed so that it's completed to the best level possible to give you the best chance of success. Now, in the meantime, we'll be discussing things with you in terms of what you have to do in the application. Now, that could be an entrance exam. It could be an interview. It could just be writing a really strong personal statement. Whatever it is, we're on hand to help you. If it's an entrance test. We've got materials that we will help you with. If it's an interview, We've got questions and sample questions from these interviews that we can give to you so that you can start going through them and preparing for it. Personal statements, we have a team that will check over and look at any improvements that can be made or any advice that they would give. And this is all obviously before you've gone to the university. So the next step is obviously once you've been accepted, it's about going there. Now, this is what most students will probably say is the most daunting step. So this is when we try to give you the most possible support. So this is why we've got teams spread across Europe that will be ready to help you. So they will be picking you up from the airport. So when you get into this new strange country that you're not used to, 
you'll have a familiar face there from Medlink that will help you. They'll pick you up from the airport and they'll help you to sort out things like accommodation, uh, bank accounts, phone numbers, where to go, you know, what shops you can go to, any tips and tricks for the city that you're in, showing you around and helping you in regards to that. Now, bear in mind as well that these teams aren't just going to be there for a second and then go again. With a lot of countries throughout Europe, we have teams on the ground that you'll always be able to go to. Um, so for example, with Dnipro, we've got an office there that all the students can go and visit whenever they have any concerns or any issues, they can come and visit the office and they can speak to us. They don't have to call up an office in another country and be put on hold and all that kind of thing. We want to be there for you. So we're there to support you throughout. And then of course, when you graduate, we want to make sure you're successful. Yes, you've worked hard through the degree. Yes, you've taken all of these daunting steps to go to a new country and all of these experiences. You've accepted all of these fantastic opportunities. But the main thing is obviously so you can get back to your country, you can register and you can practice as a doctor. So we will help you and advise you and guide you through all of those steps to ensure that you are practicing where you need to be. And then a whole new journey begins for you in your medical career. Thanks, Osman. Brilliant, Tom. Yes, uh, thank you for sharing that. And uh, this is what we love about what we do, that we are able to help you to pursue what you love. We're going to help you settle in. So you can just come and focus on education. We want you to come focus on medicine, dentistry, whatever you're here to study. We want you to focus on that only. That's why we're going to do everything we can to support you, to look after you and care for you, because we know that you're away from home. You're away from family. You're away from mom and dad. And it's not easy. I, I know because uh, it took me a while as well to build up the courage to go abroad. And the only thing I wish is that I went abroad earlier rather than uh, uh, later on. So I always encourage students to just take a leap of faith, just take a step forward, believe in yourself, because it's the best thing that you can do. Pursue what you love and not wait and uh, maybe lose the ambition, lose your motivation, because the longer you wait, the less likely you are to be able to just pack up and go abroad. And as you see here, people are from all sorts of ages, from Aryan, who is 18, 19 years old, to Daniel, who's 30, and Ashok, who's uh, uh, around 40, I believe. So people are from all kinds of backgrounds, ages, uh, races, there is no limitation when you are hungry enough for medicine. And this is, I believe, the only profession where people are so hungry that they go and sacrifice everything and go abroad, pursue it, uh, achieve what they can, and then come back home. When you are that hungry, this is when you know that this is a sign of you being a successful individual, uh, no matter what happens. Um, so... To, moving on from what uh, Tom was talking about uh, on how Medlink students can help you. Medlink also does offer academic support to students. And this is where I will ask Dr. Nihal to come in and speak a bit about how she has been uh, collaborating with us to teach students the skills required to become top junior, doctor, uh, junior doctors in the NHS or in the UK. Hello, uh, hi everyone. Thank you, Osman, for this introduction. Uh, so my name is Nihal Abusif. I'm uh, one of the uh, consultant physicians in uh, Heartlands Hospital, uh, which is part of the University Hospital Birmingham in the UK. Uh, so the reason I'm with uh, Midlink uh, today is uh, two reasons, actually. Uh, so first reason is I believe in this uh, agency very much and uh, I actually went through the experience uh, through my daughter uh, when she applied uh, to uh, the Nebro Medical Institute, which as everyone was saying, it's a very uh, lovely place to uh, apply to. The city is very friendly, people are really nice. Uh, it's a very cheap uh, area. Uh, so I also had the same experience of finding, you know, uh, a flat to live in, um, uh, having, um, some help from Medilink when we arrived in the beginning uh, and they helped us actually to find the flat and to receive, receive us in the airport and uh, drop us to the uh, 
uh, you know, the um, office in the beginning and we had a nice dinner with the people there. So they, they are very, very friendly people. They help you through all the steps. They don't really leave you after you just make the application and you have to find everything on your own. So um, uh, I was quite appreciative, you know, to what they have done to us uh, until we settled in. And um, my daughter, after that, uh, pursued uh, her education there. Uh, obviously, because of the COVID, uh, she has to come back uh, to the UK uh, and uh, to do some online uh, studying, which was also fabulous, uh, you know, that uh, she's studying abroad, but also can do some online. Uh, uh, but obviously, we went back for the exam again. Uh, but the whole experience was really very fruitful. And uh, the reason, uh, the second reason, uh, as I said, I'm helping uh, MediLink. So first, as I said, because they helped me very much uh, through my daughter. And I wanted to uh, pay back that by offering them uh, some teaching and education for the medical students. And hopefully you can extend that to other uh, countries and other universities. Uh, so I... I knew that people, when they come to the UK, they might struggle a little bit uh, with, you know, uh, fitting into the NHS system, understanding how we deal with uh, British patients, especially most of the students abroad are coming from the UK. Uh, so I thought, why don't we give them this uh, beforehand rather than leave them until they come and they go through the courses and they apply, you know, to different uh, interview courses or uh, try to come and do attachments. So I thought to transfer the information to them during the clinical years. Uh, so obviously, because I'm a clinician already, uh, I, I don't teach basic medicine, but I teach mainly clinical medicine. So I had uh, my colleagues who uh, helped me and they all get convinced with the same idea. We're about seven or eight consultants uh, who work uh, in, in the NHS. And we made a group uh, and we uh, offered the teaching for all the medical subjects. Uh, including endocrinology, uh, nephrology, neurology, uh, infectious disease, uh, surgery, and uh, we were teaching every day about one or two hours. And during this teaching, to be honest, I enjoyed that so much because I think the students there being mature and graduate student, they are all uh, very enthusiastic. They prepare the topic before we teach them. They uh, join us and they interact uh, a lot with us in questions. And I find their knowledge is really brilliant. Uh, so I was really impressed with their uh, level of education and how they are uh, preparing uh, to be doctors in the UK. Uh, they always ask the right questions and they know what they want to ask. Um, as I said, we offered them uh, uh, how they can communicate with patients when they come to the UK, how to uh, get the right questions to the patients, how to deal with difficult relatives, how to, uh, for example, do OSCE, how to, um, you know, like um, when you're in a situation when in the middle of the night and you have to deal with uh, sick patients, uh, how are you going to do A to E approach, all, all that stuff which uh, medical students uh, need and they get uh, the learning here in the UK. I think that's the main difference, to be honest, between maybe uh, UK and abroad is um, these small skills uh, they learn in the UK about dealing with patients directly uh, and doing some simulation, attending uh, case scenarios, all of that. So I thought if we transfer the same knowledge to the people abroad, uh, they will not have anything different uh, when they come back to the UK. And hopefully we're planning to help them uh, when there is uh, the, um, the, the uh, assessment exam, you know, the one which is going to be instead of the lab, uh, uh, is it called M MLA, a medical uh, uh, assessment exam. Uh, so this exam hopefully is going to be very similar to the lab examination but they need just to learn some skills about, you know, how to uh, answer questions and stuff like that, which we're very happy to provide that. Uh, so, I mean, the course we provided was almost eight to nine weeks. Uh, hopefully we can extend that uh, this year because that was just a trial course. And we're happy to teach also some more um, like communication skills, uh, OSCE and all that stuff they need when they come, they can uh, learn some interview skills as well. Uh, so it, which can help them when they apply for jobs in the UK. 
Um, we were trying also to get some uh, placements here in the UK and um, uh, was trying to help, you know, with setting up some placements through some uh, hospitals in the UK. And hopefully if this project is successful, uh, they will all have uh, what they really want uh, to be joined, you know, between studying abroad and uh, uh, coming to the UK safely uh, and happily ever after. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, uh, Osman. And uh, if anyone needs any question, or please let me know, and I'm happy to answer these questions. Thank you, Dr. Nihal. Uh, Dr. Nihal has been an integral part of uh, a lot of students who have become graduates this year and their ability to learn clinical skills that were essential, especially during the COVID period where the whole world was under lockdown and uh, no one could attend classes or hospitals. Uh, this is how we managed to help and assist students to be able to have confidence in their ability to treat clinical cases and uh, have OSCEs as well. It was a really fun and exciting course, and we plan to continue this year as well, which uh, we're really excited about for future students as well. Um, the old students as well do have access to the previous uh, recordings by Dr. Nihal and her colleagues as well, con top consultants from the UK. So uh, all future students can expect that. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about the tuition fees and living costs. Now, this is easily and readily available on our website, so I won't spend too much time on it. Um, generally, the as you can see, the tuition fees increase. So a lot of students, since Brexit happened specifically, a lot of students realized, you know what, uh, there's no difference anymore whether I go to EU or non-EU uh, when I come back to the GMC. Uh, so And now GDC as well. So now a lot of students choose the economical option, the, the European University in Tbilisi. These are really good options that offer fantastic uh, education uh, for a lower price. And it's never the case where um, these universities are compromising your education or the quality of your education just because of the price. It's actually just based on geographical location of the country and how much the country generally charges. In fact, uh, the UK used to charge £3,000 per year for tuition fees, and that was only a couple of years ago in uh, 2012. Uh, so since then, the tuition increased and uh, uh, all the universities used to offer the same tuition fee. It's never a reflection of the education or the quality of education. Uh, so as you can see, Bulgaria goes up a little bit and Romania and then Hungary and so on. Uh, but the majority of students, they want to not strain uh, put too much of a financial strain on their parents so what they do is they go for economical options and find uh, financially affordable options so you can contact our advisors uh, we'll post our email and our phone number where you can email us or call us tonight and have a chat just so we can organize for you some uh, appointment where you can speak to an expert and have um, a discussion where you can find the most suitable option for you all right, so we'll talk a little bit about degrees and where they are recognized. I'll ask my colleague Edmund, who's a top expert advisor, who's helped so many students already, hundreds and thousands of students he's spoken to, who he's helped and guided on their options abroad and how they can choose the most suitable option for them to be, so they can be able to come back home and practice as a doctor. So Edmund, would you be able to step in here, please? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you once again. Um, now, this is something a lot of the students are really worried about, especially now that the UK is out of the European Union. So a lot of them ask, you know, is the degree going to be recognized when I come back to the UK? Primarily where our students come from. Now, the answer is yes. Uh, the degree will be recognized upon return. Now, we are very particular with the universities that we work with. And that's because we want to make sure that, first of all, you get the right education, you get the right skills, and then you can come back knowing that you can use this degree. Now, in the UK currently, there are two pathways. Anyone that studies in the UK gets automatic recognition. Now, anyone that studies abroad, there are a few things that you have to do to be able to register with the Medical Council. And these are the ones that assess your degree to make sure that hey, you can work here as a doctor. Um, now, anyone that studies in the European Union, right now, the General Medical Council allows them to register. 
you go through a few processes and that's pretty much it. Anyone who studies outside the European Union, um, you have to do an exam called the PLAB. Now, all of this is changing, um, which is great. The General Medical Council are introducing a new exam uh, called the Medical License and Assessment, assessment which Dr. Nihal touched upon. Now, this, this test and the difference between this is it's going to involve everyone. Uh, whether you studied in the UK or whether you studied abroad, everyone has to do this exam. Um, and the purpose of this is to kind of bring in a common threshold for safe practice, meaning everyone has to be on the same level. Once you've done that, you can get your degree assessed by the Medical Council. And there are a few things that the GMC, who, who regulates doctors here, want to see. Um, one of it being, you know, you have to complete the course within uh, either five years or three years if you're doing postgrad. And the course study must be comprising of 5,500 hours. Now, most of the universities actually meet this and exceed that, whether you're doing a graduate entry program or whether you're doing undergrad. And then the university must be recognized and listed in the World Health Organization Directory of Medicine. Um, these are the things that the Medical Council look for, and everything is done on a case by case. But we look for universities that meet the criteria and allow you to come back and register without any issues. So we are always constantly looking for universities. And even if we find a university that doesn't meet the requirements, we will still post it on our website. So you can see things that you can avoid. Now, not to mention also students that are studying dentistry abroad will also be required to do a small test, which is called the overseas registration exam. Currently, this doesn't apply to students who study in the EU. That's something that the General Dental Council are looking to implement across. Now, this will only be for students who study abroad. So whether it's EU or outside the EU. Um, and again, the degree will prepare you for this. And we also provide extra classes to bridge the gap. Things that Dr. Nehal is doing amazingly well for. All the students will be able to come back and, and meet their requirements and be able to work just like any of these graduates have done. Thank you. Thank you, Edmund. That was a brilliant uh, uh, discussion there where you discussed a lot of important points that a lot of students have questions about. If you have any questions about what Edmund said, you can always shoot them at us in the Q&A. And um, everyone of us will pick a couple of questions and answer them during the Q&A section um in a few moments first of all a couple of questions i'll give you guys some uh, time to choose some questions to answer for our panelists uh, i'll give our audience as well some time to ask all your questions now uh we're here to help you so whatever we can provide whatever information we're more than happy to provide remember that we're only going to go over it briefly the best thing you can do is to call us or text us or email us which I've posted in the chat now, just in case you can't get on our website, just because we have so many attendees right now here that so many people are now going on to the website uh, during the webinar. It's crazy. It's wow. So many students are just hopping on the website straight away to apply and send their application and inquire. So if you can't get on simply because there's so much traffic on there, just uh, call us or email us. I've uh, put it in the chat and uh, we'll try and get back to you as, as soon as we can and uh, book you in with one of our experts like Edmund, Tom, Dana or anyone else who will support you with your application and there's no obligation whatsoever to sign up it's all just to provide you with information this is the sole purpose of why we set up meddling students to provide information and help students and those who would choose and want our help we're more than willing to try and give you as much help as we can some uh, questions I've noticed as well in the chat coming up in the Q&A section coming up a lot are uh, about clinics. It is possible to do your clinical rotations in the university, and this is part of the university course. You don't need to do anything extra. You just attend university and you will be in placement in hospital placements from year four to six. Um, now, some students, they choose to do their hospital placements in their home country, like the UK, USA, or, or other, other countries, which we help you with as well. We provide you with a lot of support to be able to find a placement because it's really competitive. So many international graduates, since last year, we introduced this program, 
so many international uh, international graduates, they come to the UK, they go to Germany, Sweden, whatever their home country is. Um, a lot of you are from Middle East, Africa, America, Canada, Australia. I see so many students tonight that have joined us. Amazing turnout. And all these people are, all of you, you're really passionate about pursuing medicine and pursuing what you love. And that's what we love about you and why we want to help you because we share the same passion. So um, regarding clinical rotations, we can help you organize your clinical rotations at home where you can usually get signed off for them in your home country by one of the doctors who will be training you and uh, get that right guidance that you need an exemption so you, don't, so you can do it at home rather than abroad. Uh, only a few options would allow this. Again, speak to us, call us, email us, so we can uh, discuss this further with you. All right, so uh, Edmund, do you have any questions that you've picked out, Edmund, Dana, or Tom, that you'd like to answer here now? Uh, yes, I think this, this is probably a question for uh, one of the students studying there. Perhaps Daniel will be able to shed some light on this. Um, someone's asking what a regular day uh, looks like for a student, you know, so the lectures, the time, how is it, how long are the lectures, uh, and what is the teaching style, and how are you tested? Thank you. Um, so we have a timetable, and usually the classes start at eight o'clock in the morning, and depending on which day it is, you can have at least four classes, but mostly it's about eight to around four. Sometimes you can have a time to go by starting eight to eight. Doesn't mean that you're studying nonstop from eight o'clock to eight. It's like you have just classes. You have classes of about two hours spread all, um, you know, throughout the day. You mostly maximum of about two or three. Um, you only get tested for what you study. So that's the best thing about this. They will not test you anything they haven't taught you. And for example, let's talk about like anatomy. It's divided. You start with, for example, we, we started with upper limb and lower limb. We got tested on that. And then we moved to thorax and the head. We got tested on that. And then next semester, we're going to do something different. You get tested on that. You will never make that again, but you will use that information and that knowledge throughout your education. I hope I have answered the question. Brilliant. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Uh, Dana or Tom, do you have, uh, do you see any questions you'd like to answer as well? And anyone else feel free to uh, step in. I see a lot of questions I would like to answer as well, but I want to give you guys the chance to answer them. I, have, I know. I'd like yes, to Dana. answer. I have a student asking, how long do students usually apply via MedLink to reserve their place before they enroll in the course? And I've seen another student ask, when is the deadline for applications? So I just wanna tell you guys that it's getting really late at the moment. So uh, whenever you feel ready that you need, you're sure you wanna study medicine, just go for it, don't postpone, don't delay because deadlines are on the doors. Some universities, their deadlines have passed. Some are still available. So you don't use, lose the opportunity of joining now in September 2021. Get in touch with us. Let us start your application to a university. Um, don't delay it because it is actually late, but it's still available. Um, it usually takes around two, three weeks. Depends on the university. Each university has um, a different process. Depends on the documents that you have, if they're all available with you. And we need to work on your uh, documents and translate them and do our part. So better to start soon. It takes around two, three weeks and you'll have your entrance exam or uh, you'll have the invitation letter. Thank you, Dana. Tom, you have any questions you'd like to answer? Yeah, thanks, Osman. So I noticed a student a few minutes ago saying that they got three A stars from their A-level results. So first of all, congratulations to you. Um, and secondly, asking if they still have to do the entrance exams. Um, so with the universities that have entrance exams, you will always have to do them. Um, how they tend to look at it is through a mixture of both your grades and the score that you get on the entrance test. 
Now, the good news is, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of universities that don't offer, uh, don't have entrance exams. So you may be able to go to a university that has an interview process or perhaps one that just relies on the application. There are lots of different options out there. And the other thing to say is you don't all need A-stars either. Um, the great thing about Europe is the variety and is the fact that every country's got their own requirements. Every country looks at different priorities and has different agendas when they're looking at which students they want to have the places at their universities. So there will always be an option for you, regardless of whether results day was a celebration or whether it was a, a little bit of a down day that you'd rather forget. We will be able to help you. You can still pursue your dream. Um, so get in touch with us through the website and you'll be passed on to either myself or Dana, Edmund, one of our other fantastic advisors, and uh, we will go from there. Great. Thank you, Tom. Edmund? Yes. Uh, another question that we tend to get asked, and I, I think it's been brought up here as well, is um, does Georgia uh, provide 5,500 hours or contact hours? Um, one thing that I mentioned in, in earlier was that we look for universities that meet criteria of acceptances, for example, in the UK. Now, it's not just the UK. We look for universities that meet a standard across any country that you decide to study in or practice in. Now, the World Health Organization has a standard that you have to meet, meaning that there are specific hours that students must do in order to, for their degree to be recognized. So we have to look for all of these things to make sure that you going over there, you are sorted, you can get the skills that you need to come back. So what the 5,500 hours comprises of is lectures, seminars, your practicals, so your rotations, things that you'll do as a student, excluding any self-directed studies or independent study. This is what comprises of the hours that the medical council will be looking for. So back in the UK, they only need 5,500. Anyone that's doing a, a six-year program will do more than that. Most of the universities have hours of 1,800 per year. So you do over 10,000 by the time you finish. Students that do graduate entry will always meet the, the hours because, again, they have enough hours that are done in the four or three years or however many years they do. Um, so to reassure people that are concerned about going to countries like Georgia to study and do less than six years, the degree also allows you to come back and meet the requirements of the Medical Council. Great, thank you, Edmund. Um, I see here one question as well I'd like to answer is, a lot of students are wondering what do they do outside of study? Because yes, we focused a lot about how education is great and the universities are amazing and the, the experience is enriching. Um, but some students are asking, what's it like to study abroad, uh, to uh, live abroad and have that experience, which I would like to bring Babar in to answer this and uh, give you a little bit more about his experience of how living abroad and what kind of activities he was up to and uh, how he's enjoyed the lifestyle and so on. Baba, are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here now. I thought it was it needed, so I just started cooking my dinner for tonight. <laughs> okay, it's great uh, studying from home. This is what you get to do as well when you have your online classes, I assume, huh? I say I have a lot of time to yourself and I need to cook, don't I? <laughs> all right yeah. so um could you tell us a little bit about your kind of activity because the first thing that i thought it's like a third it's like a whole different planet eastern europe it's going to be nothing like the uk because obviously the first first thing that you do as a, as a uk student is expect the same thing but when it came here it was totally the opposite of what i thought you've got your everything's here basically from halal food various types of um brands all of that um well so I, I'm, I'm totally thinking about my food I've, i lost all my notes give me one second let me just get it up 
So what kind of uh, like what kind of social activities have you found the most fun? Just in my food, so I completely thought that they don't need me, so I don't need to think of anything. Right. So um, to do things, obviously, there's a lot to do uh, because we live on the uh, Nipro is on the riverside, so there's a lot of water support, uh, water sports uh, activities, jet skis, uh, canoeing. Um, what else have you got? You got, you got sailing. Uh, you can hire out yachts and all that sort of stuff. Um, other than that, you have um, like quads, uh, restaurants. There's a lot of really nice restaurants so, um, uh, in Nipro. Uh, top end as well, to be honest. So not not like any just any old restaurant. They they actually top quality. You have to dress up nicely to get in. Um, as well as that, like I said, food for um, vegetarians, halal food. A lot of options, restaurants, um, malls. What else have we got? Oh yeah, and another thing that I liked uh, about you, uh, Nepal and that as well, is that uh, a lot of the places are 24 hours. So if you want to do food deliveries, like, like in UK, food delivery stops at, what is it, 10, 11, 11 p.m. Here it's literally all night. So if, if, you, if you've just come in after a night out or something at three, four, five in the morning, you can literally just go on the app. Uh, over here, it's something called Global. And you can literally just order food, McDonald's, KFC, whatever's active. Um, cinema obviously it's it's uh, the English movies only come on once a week uh, but it's enough um, you don't really need to go every day anyway um, other than that what else Gym. how is it uh, finding friends Barbara and settling in which a lot of students worry about you know I'm going to a completely foreign country and uh, I don't speak the language how is it settling in with international students and the locals as well my experience was quite different to Ashok's. I was listening to uh, Ashok's experience before. Mine was quite different. I was in the um, um, spring intake and I had the same uh, sort of dilemma. I thought that there's not going to be many UK students at all, but I was overwhelmed with the amount of UK students that are here. Um, as soon as I came, went to obviously lectures. Lectures started in Feb for me. Um, as soon as I went into lectures, uh, met other UK students. And the good thing about it is that because we're from Medlink, we'll only get put in with the uh, UK students. So uh, network just grew after that. Um, from them, met other people, met other people now, literally all of my social group is full of just UK students. But um, not to say that you don't meet the international students as well. Uh, obviously they're all inter uh, English speaking. So um, it's, it's quite diverse. And they're all friendly. Everyone, obviously, they're, they're more uh, friendly after you find out that, well, after they find out that you're from the UK. So obviously they want to know about um, life in the UK as well. So, Yeah, it's usually easier because you're from the same country, right? But what about uh, students here that are from different countries like America and Japan and Africa and Middle East and Europe? What would yeah. you say to them as well, Baba? You get to meet them as well. Uh, like I say, obviously, now now with the student union that's open as well, we've, we've um integrating well we meet meeting other students as well because like I say first you it was just limited to just uh, uk students but now all these other other students as well um uh, americans i've met americans australians very good friends of mine now actually one of the americans that i know they've just graduated this year a uh, dental student um australians tunisians um where else moroccans so many so many and um, like, like I say, my, my network's just gone global now from UK to just global network. Yeah, that's one of the amazing things about going abroad as well, that you get to meet people from every single culture and every single background that can help you and help you grow as an individual and enrich your understanding and open your mind into a different culture, which a lot of people don't realize until they come abroad and they're like, ah, you know what? It's shocking the first couple of days. And then eventually you fall in love with the place and you start to call it home. And it's amazing, the transition. So thank you for sharing that, Babar. What about Ashok? Would you be able to add a little bit here uh, about uh, the extracurricular activities that you've been up to outside of academics? We're always up to many things, actually, as one. Um, can you hear me? Uh, um, can you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah, we're always up to things because um, we've got um, the student union um, and we've got activities going on. The first one is like we are, I, I'm one of the sports leaders so along with Hassan um, from the uh, fifth year. So we are trying to organize sports. Um, so we've got um, cricket, football, badminton, things going on. And then we also have various gyms, gym activities. So there are people who sign up for gyms and they go around. As mentioned before, it was more diverse. So you can, you can try and mingle with quite a lot of cultures. So that gives you an opportunity to know more cultures, make more friends abroad. And then I'm, you can visit their country whenever you have time. So um, we, we've got multivarious activities. And um, if you want to do anything, yeah, I mean, Dinapro offers quite a lot, actually. So we go on the boat in the evening, sometimes in the summer. So we've got all sorts going on, like any other place in, in the Europe. Thank you, Ashok. Fantastic, brilliant uh, addition there. Um, yes, there is so much to do about uh, when you're living abroad, and it's the best time that you will have because you know once you become a doctor or a dentist, you have so much responsibility. So you will enjoy your time a lot while you're studying. You will explore and uh, have a really good uh, adventurous time. Uh, another thing as well is uh, I see Doctor uh, Saz wants to answer one of the questions about transfers. Would you be able to uh, go ahead, Dr. Saz? Absolutely. Uh, Osman, uh, that's, it's a great question, actually. And I think the answer is really that it, it depends. Um, in the time that I was at university, um, there were a lot of students who managed to transfer over to their home countries whilst they were doing their program. So whilst they were making huge amounts of progress through their dentistry programs in, in Latvia, which is where I studied, um, many students, um, after they got past their preclinical years, so the, the first two years, which is the preclinical sciences, um, they started to apply back home. And, and some of those people went straight back home. Then we also had some students who managed to transfer across from Lithuania as well, and they started studying with us. And so the answer really is, it depends. But yes, it is possible. But I guess that really, it's not something that I personally did, but it's something that I witnessed and I saw students sort of changing their situations in order to fit, um, you know, particular lifestyle demands that they wanted, whether it was to move back home to their parents or to start an, um, the program in Latvia. Uh, maybe they wanted to specialize in certain particular areas because we've had some great specialists in the Baltics there and they maybe wanted to work with them more closely. So those things are all on the table, but what I really admire about those people actually, and was slightly envious of them for was the fact that whilst they were making progress, they were still able to to um, make arrangements for transfers if they wanted. So um, I think it's just a case of making those inquiries between the universities, seeing where the credits were equivalent, and then making that making that move. Yeah, thank you, Doctor Saz. Dr. Uh, yeah, that was a really good addition there. Uh, so I think we'll close it off here, guys. Uh, we've been here for two hours. We've tried to answer as many questions as we can. There are hundreds of questions. It's really tough to try and get to each and every one of them. That's why we put this slide here, especially for you guys, because we see that you're very curious, which is an amazing trait. Be curious about it. Be open-minded. And by being here and lasting until the end of the webinar, you know, you are the distinguishing person from the average person who wants to study medicine. You are the phenomenal person who wants to study medicine or dentistry because you are putting in the effort. You're trying your best. You're going the extra mile. You're educating yourself. You're learning. And it's so important that you go to the right people to learn about this information because there's so many people out there and so much overwhelming information out there on the Internet that you don't know usually where to go. This is why we came in. This is why, this is the spirit of MedLink students, why we started our company, our supportive organization, because we wanted to give you genuine, transparent, and upfront advice to find a place that suits you best. So you can study medicine and dentistry and enjoy it and love it and experience the thrilling feeling of becoming a dentist or a doctor when you graduate. Imagine yourself from six years from now, when you are on the, on the podium with your graduation hat 
and you've graduated as a dentist or a doctor and you're ready to come home, imagine that journey that you would have gone through. It will make you grow as an individual. It will make you become a better person. You will see things that you would never have seen at home. Uh, you will see diseases that are more tropical or uh, things that are going to make you stand out as a doctor. You're going to have a much more thorough clinical experience. You're going to have plenty of exciting opportunities to grow your clinical experience, to become a competent doctor. And this is why we're, this is why we're here, to guide you, to help you and advise you as much as we can. So get in touch with us. I understand some people are not able to get on the website and that's uh, very normal. Usually during these webinars, we have hundreds and hundreds of students that join, uh, come on and off and on and off. And these guys are jumping on the website, submitting their inquiries, submitting their details so we can get in touch with them. It's normal to experience some slowness or to experience some delay with the website. That's why we've also put the email and our phone number. So do get in touch with us. Um, and we'll try and support you as much as we can. We'll give you all the essential information that you need to become a phenomenal doctor, to pursue your dream, to become the best version of yourself and achieve what you are destined to become, whether that is a doctor or a dentist. You can also scan here the attendance certificate to get a certificate of attendance for your attendance here and the certificate of achievement, sorry, where... Um, you will have that uh, because you lasted until the end and uh, really well done on the staying till the end, asking us so many questions. We really loved uh, being here and I'm sure our doctors, dentists and advisors and students will also agree. It's been really fun today speaking with you and uh, uh, chatting together here and giving you as much information as we can. So thank you for staying till the end. Get in touch with us. Let's have a chat. Let's give you as much information and much, much more information than what you experienced here in these two hours. We're going to give you one-on-one -on -one support, advice, guidance, and we're going to make sure that you are well-informed so you can make the most informed decision on what's best for you and your future, whether you're a parent or a child or a student um, or you're just curious. Get in touch. Let's speak. Let's chat. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, I hope you have a great, amazing evening and a great, amazing rest of the week. I hope you can pursue medicine as fast as possible and as smooth and streamlined as possible. And I hope we can help you with that. Take care. Have a great evening and uh, see you on the next webinar. Thank you, Usman. Thank you all to all our panelists as well for joining and uh, really amazing uh, talks, really amazing discussions from everyone. Thanks, bye. Thank you, bye-bye.